Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy Andrew and welcome back to sports but casually and finally finally, I'm back. I know it's been a while <laughs> shit's just been crazy I didn't have time to record and everything which is why I will not be doing a week 17 recap because that's been over a week now and by the time I record and edit it it'll probably like be two weeks late and it makes no sense so unfortunately i will be skipping week 17 and going straight into week 18 of my nba news and update series it's like one o'clock in the morning i'm tired as shit but you know i have my coffee this day like... ah it's too hot it's still too hot it's still too hot well but before we get into everything, as always, make sure to follow me on TikTok and Instagram at Sports But Casually. Keep up with stuff I do there. And give this video a like, it'll make me feel a lot better about myself. Subscribe to the channel, I would really appreciate it if you do. And share it with a friend if you feel so inclined. Well, we waited enough. Let's get into week 18 of my NBA news and update series, starting with the big headlines. So, kicking things off, Clint Capella had 25 points, grabbed 24 rebounds, and blocked 3 shots. He's the first Atlanta Hawk player to have multiple 20, 20, and 3 games in a season since Dikembe Mutombo did it in 1999. With a 34 point and 11 assist game, Trey Young now sets the record for most 30 and 10 games by a player before turning 23 since the beginning of the three-point line era, which is in 1980. In an overtime victory versus the Pelicans, Knicks legend and future MVP Julius Randle scored 33 points, gave out 10 assists, and had 5 steals on the night. He's the first Knicks player since Carmelo Anthony in 2013 to have 4 straight 30-point games. He's also the first New York Knicks to have a 30-point 10 assist 5 steal game since Nate Robinson did it in 2009. It's like every day he just sets a new record, like he's literally amazing. Charlotte Hornets guard Scary Terry, or Terry Rose as if you want to be formal, scored 34 points, grabbed 8 rebounds, dished out 10 assists, and made 7 threes. He's the first player in Hornets franchise history to have a 30, 5, and 10 game while making 5 or more threes. Fashion icon Aleske Pokusevsky had 6 blocks in a game, which makes him the first OKC Thunder rookie to have 5 or more blocks in a game since Serge Ibaka did it in 2010. Moving on to Steph Curry passing the late great Kobe Bryant for the longest streak of 30 point games by a player over 33 with 11. Congrats to the legend. Long and like Curry. Speaking of legends, Chris Paul passed Magic Johnson for 5th all-time in the NBA's assist leaders list. Congrats CP3. He now joins John Stockton and Jason Kidd as players who are in the top 5 in both all-time assists and all-time steals. So, he joins Elite Company. The legend grows for CP3. Now he just needs to win a ring. MVP frontrunner Nikola Jokic had a 47 point, 15 rebound and 8 assist game. He's the first center to have a 45, 15 and 8 game since Akeem the Dream Olajuwon did it in 1996. So congrats to the Joker. Despite only being a sophomore, Ja Morant has already recorded his third 30 point and 10 assist game, which is the most in Grizzlies franchise history. Knicks legend and future MVP Julius Randle recorded his second 40-point, 10-rebound, 5-assist game. He is the third Knicks player to have multiple 40, 10, and 5 games in a season. However, to add to his great New York Knicks legacy, he did become the only player in franchise history to have a 14, 10, and 5 game while shooting 50% from the field, 40% from 3, and 90% from the line. Knicks legend Julius Randle. Andrew Wiggins becomes the first NBA player born in Canada to score 10,000 career points. So, congrats. 
Oh, Leans. What could have been? Dame time. Damian Lillard passed Jason Kidd for 10th all-time in the NBA's three-pointers made list. So, congrats. Now, moving on to Julius Randle, once again. Next time, this is like, what, the third time I've mentioned his name in this video? Nick's legend! Anyway, Randall recorded 31 points and 10 rebounds versus the Raptors. This makes him the first Nick player since Carmelo Anthony did it in 2013 to have back-to-back -back 30 and 10 games. What a, what a guy, what a legacy. The Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo passed Glenn Robinson to become the second all-time leading scorer in the Milwaukee Bucks franchise history. He now only trails the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. So, congrats Giannis. And finally, Pelicans forward Zion Williamson became the 12th player in NBA history to amass 2,000 career points before playing his 80th game. He joins the great Michael Jordan as the only players in the last 40 years to do so. He did it in 79 games, which is tied for 10th fastest alongside Rick Barry and Elgin Baylor. That, that is such an accomplished one. Like, we knew this guy was going to be good, but I, especially me, I didn't think he would be joining such an elite company so early on in his career. Oh, by the way, if you want to see, like, the list of the other guys who've done it, it's, it's right here. Saw it? Alright, great. And now it's time for my one interesting thing that happened in week 18. And let's go back to the Knicks-Raptors game I was talking about a few minutes ago. So, by the Knicks beating the Raptors, also shout out for beating us, you know, Faith Brigade still going strong. Anyway, by the Knicks beating the Raptors, that marked their ninth victory in a row, which happens to be the second largest win streak for the Knicks in the last 25 years. That also took them seven games above 500, which they haven't been since the 2012-2013 season, which was their last playoff appearance. So, you know, it's good that the Knicks are good, you know? I guess it makes basketball better and makes it more entertaining, especially now they have a New York rivalry with them and the Nets. So, congrats to the Knicks, y'all. Years of pain and you know, y'all getting some happiness. I love that. And now we move on to my Players of the Week, starting as always with the Ethan Conference Player of the Week. And this week I'm going to give it to Bradley Beal of the Washington Wizards. Beal's game has been great all season, and it's great to see that the Wizards are actually winning. It should be a tight race between him and Steph for the scoring title this season. In the three games he played this week, he averaged almost 31 points, 3 assists and almost 6 rebounds a game, while getting 2 steals and a block a game as well, shooting almost 49% from the field and just a little above 56% from 3 on just a little above 5 attempts per game. Moving on now to my Western Conference Player of the Week. And yo, this one was real tough. It was between CP3, Michael Porter Jr. and Ja Morant. And like, you know, after going back and forth with all three of them, I decided I'm gonna give it to Ja Morant of the Memphis Grizzlies. Despite not having the best week record-wise, Morant has been absolutely sensational. He's leading his team in a strong Western Conference and now they just need to finish strong and hope for the best in the playoffs. In the three games he played this week, he averaged just above 30 points, almost 10 assists and just above 6 rebounds a game, almost getting 2 steals a game as well, shooting just under 59% from the field and 50% from 3 on just below 5 attempts per game. And now we move on to my Rookies of the Week starting as always with the Eastern Conference. And this week, I'm going to give it to Peyton Pritchard of the Boston Celtics. Pritchard played big minutes this week and his fearlessness and shooting prowess are big reasons why the Celtics were able to recover from such a mid-season slump. In the three games he played this week, he averaged just above 15 points a game, almost two assists and almost three rebounds a game as well, shooting 57% from the field and shooting almost 59% from three on just below six attempts per game. Finally, we get to my Western Conference Rookie of the Week. 
and this award is going to go to another grizzly as I'm going to be giving it to Xavier Tillman Sr. He got three starts last week and made the most of them. He's a great finisher around the rim and brings some much needed defense to the team. In the three games he played, he averaged almost 13 points, almost two assists and almost 11 rebounds a game, getting just under two steals a game as well. Shooting almost 61% from the field and 40% from three on just below two attempts per game. And now we come to the final segment of the video. As always, it's the conference standings. I'll take a look from week 17 compared to week 18, see which teams went up, which team went down, and which team stayed the same. You guys let me know how your team performed this week in the comments below. And that's a wrap everybody, that was week 18 in the NBA in a nutshell. I hope this video was both informative and also very entertaining. Guys, I think we have like what, three weeks left in the NBA until we get to the play-in games. So the seedings, I wouldn't say we'll see new teams move up into the play-in race, especially in the Western Conference. So I think in that conference, the teams, like those 10 teams are what we're gonna get. It's just the seedings of them now. The Eastern Conference is a little more wide open, especially in the play-in tournaments. You have the Bulls, you have the Wizards, and you have the Raptors. Please, Raptors, don't bother with it. Just, just miss, you know, I know Broncos. Just don't, just lose games. I beg it. <laughs> just move away from basketball for a bit. The NFL draft will actually be the 29th of April and will last a couple of days. So after that happens, I will be debuting my new series, not like directly after, probably like a week or two after. Um, so stay tuned for that. That's very exciting on that. I'm looking forward to hoping it goes well. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Um, follow me on TikTok and Instagram at SportsPodCasually. Um, make sure to like this video, it will make me feel a lot better about myself. My self esteem would suffer if you don't. Um, share this video with a friend if you feel so inclined. If you don't have friends, share it with your family. You know, if you don't have family, oh shit. And subscribe to the channel, it will really mean a lot and you can stay focused on when I drop the new series. And yeah, I think that's it. The coffee's done and so is this video. Later.